Welcome to HITC Sport. And right, this video is going to annoy a lot of you. I'm going to take a look at every Premier League club's manager that they sacked in the past, only for him to currently now have an even better job than the one ye apparently deemed him not good enough for. Now, better doesn't automatically mean a bigger club or anything, just just a better job. God, this is going to trigger so many of you in the comments. Right, let's go. Arsenal, Unai Emery, Villarreal. Okay, I was tempted to pick Arsene Wenger, who now has a cosy office job as head of FIFA footballing development. Now, don't get it wrong, the Arsenal manager's gig is a much more prestigious job than spending six hours a day trying to outlaw throw-ins, but at least he doesn't spend his working day getting shouted at by his colleagues, because I don't think the receptionist is going to scream, it's time to go, every time he wanders into the canteen to grab a donut. But I'm going to go with Unai Emery. Apparently seen as a big Spanish joke in North London. Well, lads, he's currently in Villarreal, and yes, they are a smaller club. Christ above, they have a 23,000 seater stadium. By comparison, the Emirates looks like a goddamn spaceship. But while Arsenal haven't scored from open play in the league since October 4th, Emery is actually in a tight race. They're third in the league, above both Real Madrid and Barcelona, and just four points off Real Sociedad at the top. Yes, Arsenal are top of their Europa League group, but so too is Emery. So yes, despite the fact that he's still picking Francis Cockle in the midfield, and has a bench filled with former Premier League defensive ham sandwiches, Emery actually is a better and much more comfier job right now. No more press conferences in broken English, where everyone laughs at him saying good evening. And, and Christ above, I doubt the Spanish version of troops is screaming down the lens comparing him to a soggy ham roll either. Aston Villa, Steve Bruce, Newcastle. Yeah, this one is controversial. Bringing up the never-ending argument between Aston Villa and Newcastle about who is the bigger club. Lads, when both clubs have won a combined two lonely inter Cup pamphlets since 1996, it's a bit like the Mitchell brothers arguing over who is the best head of hair. Listen, Bruce is the modern-day Alan Pardew, stuck in a miserable dead-end job, given barely any funds to work with, and taking the brunt of fan frustration. But yes, being yelled at by Geordies on the internet mustn't be much fun, but Christ above, it beats getting an actual cabbage lobbed off your head. Not to mention, when he was at Villa Park, he was stuck halfway down the championship and picking Glenn Whelan every week. Safe to say he has a better job now. Although that's not saying much. Brighton, nobody. If only Oscar Garcia had stayed at Celta Vigo, he'd be a shoo-in. But no, he was sacked two weeks ago after one win in nine games. If you're comparing the size of clubs, then Chris Hewton is at a mammoth footballing giant like Nottingham Forest, making former club Brighton look like a rundown post office by comparison. But still, he left behind a Premier League job, so I can't pick him either. Sorry lads, looks like I can't find one for Brighton. Burnley, Adrian Heath, Minnesota United. Anyone remember Adrian Heath? No, sacked as manager of Burnley in June 1997 when they were ninth in League One. Not great, but hey, this former Geordie striker has been working in America for 12 years. He's currently at Minnesota United in the MLS, pitting his wits against Yapstam, Thierry Henry, and Bruce Arena. Trips to Los Angeles and New York, probably better than six hour round bus rides to Grimsby and Tranmere in the late 90s. Chelsea, Antonio Conte, Inter Milan. Okay, well, if Juventus had just stuck with Maurizio Sarri a little longer, this would be an easy pick for Chelsea. Instead, let's go for Antonio Conte, who's done the Josie Mourinho move of linking up with the San Siro after being served as P45 in Stamford Bridge. Chelsea fans might think I'm mental to consider a move to Inter Milan to be an upgrade on Chelsea, but why not? Why isn't this the better job? He's the second best paid manager on the planet, earning £12 million every season. Price of he makes more than Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp. Mental. And he didn't even have to sell his soul to the devil by pretending to care about the standard of Chinese football or go and live in Qatar. Spending his Saturday afternoons being interviewed by Richard Keyes and Andy Gray. Christ, they probably spent half the interview asking whether his daughter's of legal age. Chelsea was a good gig, but he finally has his hands on Romelu Lukaku after Roman Abramovich just refused to buy him in 2017. He gets the players he wants instead of Michael and Milano handing him a fat Danny drink quarter and a rigid Alvaro Morata. And he's also in a Serie A title race with the Melanese neighbours. Yeah, they flopped in Europe, but if he manages to guide Inter to their first league title in a decade, oh, he'd probably have a statue erected aside the ground. And to do that with both Ashley Young and Matteo Darmian, it'd be like if Lewis Hamilton won the Grand Prix in a three-wheeled caravan. Crystal Palace, Frank de Boer, Holland. This is hilarious. Frank de Boer has already chucked his managerial career off a cliff. Failing in Inter Milan was bad, but lasting four Premier League games at Crystal Palace, not even hanging around long enough to see his team score a damn goal, Palace fans could be forgiven for thinking that his next job will be cleaning toilets in KFC. No, no, somehow he's been given the job of manager of Holland for your 2021. At Palace, he was stuck in a relegation dogfight and heavily relying on Wilfred Zaha. Now he's coaching Virgil van Dijk, Jorginho Wijnaldum, Frankie de Jong, Memphis Depay, Steven Bergwijn, lads. Although, how can he look Patrick van Anhalt in the eye during international duty? That Palace left back probably greeted his appointment by getting sick in his mouth. Everton, Roberto Martinez, Belgium. Roberto Martinez is one of the best jobs, not just in football, but on the face of the earth. Imagine being given a three million pound annual salary to work about 10 weeks in a year, overseeing Belgium's golden generation of talent. This is a former Wigan and Swansea coach here, being handed arguably the most star-studded squad on the planet. He's already got a bronze World Cup medal, 
survival, which admittedly means about as much as winning a toy out of a cereal box, but he's preparing to have a crack at winning Fuhrer 2021 with the likes of Kevin De Bruyne, Eden Hazard and Romelu Lukaku. And to think Everton sacked him in 2016, they deemed him unfit to even coach the standard of Ashley Williams, Gareth Barry and Ross Barkley. But seeing him now, surrounded by Belgium's world-class stars, it must be like seeing your ex-wife out to dinner with Magic Mike. Fulham, Slavisa Jokonovic, Al Jurafa. Listen, when Slavisa Jokonovic was sacked in the Premier League with Fulham back in late 2018, it wasn't a fun job. His squad had basically been showered with overpaid lumps of fudge and they were losing every week. Now he's out in guitar with Al Jurafa. Yes, it's a pudding league, but he's in a title race, trying to plot the downfall of Sandy Gazzorla. Oh yeah, and did I mention the big fat pay rise? And if Fulham fans try to dispute this, why don't you ask Salvisa himself which job he prefers? And special mention for Claudio Ranieri, who's currently comfortably mid-table in Serie A with Sampdoria, instead of being chased out of Fulham by an angry mob. Leeds, Darko Milanic, Slovan Bratislava. Listen, Darko Milanic would rip off his left arm to take Marcelo Bielsa's current job at Leeds, but the job he briefly had at Ellen Road six years ago was not an attractive geek. Massive club, yes, but a club clearly run by a madman. Christ above, Milanic only lasted 32 days in the job. A green to work for Leeds and a Masibo Cialino. It was like a green to stick your hand in a lawnmower. This guy would have probably moved his family over from Austria, only to be given just six games at Leeds in the championship. He's currently at Slovan Bratislava, currently the Slovakian champions. At Leeds, he was just looking for a route into the Premier League. Never mind that, at Bratislava, this guy is a realistic crack at Champions League football next season. Leicester, nobody. I really wanted to pick Ranieri for this, but come on, he was sacked from Leicester when they were in the Champions League last 16. Sampdoria is not an upgrade on that gig. I can't pick any former Leicester manager for this, but let's just revisit this when Spenior and Eriksson gets another international job with someone like Nigeria. Then we can talk. Liverpool, Rafael Benitez, Dalian Professional. Okay, calm down Liverpool fans, don't worry. No Dalian Professional is not a bigger club than Liverpool. Don't worry, I haven't stuck my brain in a toaster. And Chinese relegation battles with Salomon Rondon stuffed up front is clearly not preferable to your being nice at Anfield with Steven Gerrard and Fernando Torres. But from a purely financial point of view, he's earning 12 million pounds after tax. But obviously, I mean, he was hardly going to leave England for a minimum wage contract, working out of a three-star Chinese travel lodge now, was he? But this is one of the best football managerial salaries of all time. He essentially wins the £1 million jackpot every month of his life now. The man probably wipes his arse with £50 checks. Also, yes, Dalian aren't very good, but they are ambitious. They're building a £230 million training ground with 23 pitches that will be even bigger than Real Madrid's complex, never mind Liverpool's. Their stadium is also bigger than Anfield's. It's not a bigger job, but it is an easier, comfier, and more lucrative gig that means stuck in between two arguing football owners back in 2010. Man City, Roberto Mancini, Italy. Yeah, let's be honest, what former Man City boss wouldn't absolutely love to be sitting in Pep Guardiola's chair right now? Christ love, with a standard of attacking talent at the Eddie had, join that to Kevin Keegan. It'd be like locking Johnny Vegas in a room filled with 17 different types of cake. Keegan would probably have been so overwhelmed, he'd probably have needed to have his stomach pumped. I'm gonna go for Roberto Mancini here. If we're solely talking about the City team he'd left behind when sacked in June 2013, then yeah, it was an aging, stale team. They'd finished bottom of their Champions League group, finished 11 points off the title and lost the FA Cup final to Wigan. Clearly the players had just stopped listening. Now though, he's arguably been given the biggest honour of his life, managing his country, looking to have a real crack at winning the Euro 2020 group in June. No, it's not a better set of players than what he had at the end he had, but for a patriotic Italian who spent virtually his entire 20 year playing career in Serie A, and spent a decade playing for his country, and a further 10 years coaching in Italy, then this must be the pinnacle of his career. Man United, Jose Mourinho, Tottenham. Okay, Man United have only sacked three managers since the 80s. No, I'm not insane enough to think David Moyes now has a better job at West Ham, or that Louis van Gaal has a better gig being nagged at home by the wife. But Mourinho, listen, comparing the size of both Tottenham and Man United, it's ridiculous. But never mind the size of the club, right now Josie is in a better footballing environment than the mess he inherited at Old Trafford. Simply put, he has a better group of footballers than the aging bag of porridge he had in Manchester. He finds himself in a title race, working for a board who's actually allowing him to make transfers. Christ above, they've given him a world superstar like Gareth Bale. It's a far cry from begging Ed Woodward on hands and knees for a 50 million pound Toby Alder Bywell now, isn't it? Also, Josie gets to live in his London house with his wife and kids, instead of crying himself to sleep in a Manchester hotel whilst probably trying to make love to a pillow. Newcastle Graham soon as Sky Pundit. Yeah, there's not many sack Newcastle managers I can pick here. Chris Hewton is stuck in the bottom half of the championship being forced to pick Jack Colback every week, and Steve McLaren is a technical director of Derby County. Right, so imagine being a football club who will point that man four goddamn times. He usually ought to be able to pick Sam Allardyce, but consider he's currently stuck on the couch with a hand down his pants. I'm gonna have to go with Graham Souness instead. Succeeding Sir Bobby Robson in 2004 was a tough task, but given a dressing room who were literally fighting on the pitch, pretending to be injured, and with a massive over-reliance on an aging Alan Shearer, and with a Geordie fan base who 
infuses him with a violent passion, then yeah, earning a fortune to sit in a comfy Sky Sports studio, giving a fat paycheck just to criticise Paul Pogba's latest haircut, it's not a bigger job, but good Christ, it's clearly a more relaxing and less emotionally draining one for a man who's nearly 70 years of age. This guy used to spend his Saturday afternoons being shouted at by angry Geordies. Now he just gets called a mug by Jack Bain online. It's fine, he can deal with that. Sheffield United, Steve Bruce, Newcastle. Christ well, Steve Bruce makes it into this list twice, and I don't even think he's got a particularly envious job. Working under Mike Ashley is like trying to make a Christmas dinner for six, when you only have three potatoes and a half-eaten Twix in the cupboard. But still, it's a better job than what he left behind in 1999, when Sheffield United were eighth of the championship. It wasn't good. Southampton, Ronald Koeman, Barcelona. Okay, yes, I know Southampton didn't sack Ronald Koeman. He just walked out of them for Everton in 2016. But still, he is still a former manager. It's the closest I can find. Because no lads, I cannot bring myself to say that Alan Pardew has a better job as technical director of CSK Sofia out the west coast of Bulgaria. Just no. Coleman is currently the manager of Barcelona in charge of one of the greatest footballers of all time. Just a mental career progression for what was once a mid-table Premier League manager, Tottenham Andre Vs Boas Marseille. Okay, no, the Marseille gig is not better than the current Tottenham job, but it is probably better than what Andre Vs Boas had back in 2013. He was sacked in December of that year after 6-0 and 5-0 defeats against Man City and Liverpool. But it was a horrible job. He'd just seen his best player Gareth Bale yanked out of his grasp and replaced with a big bag of rubbish. It was a weak dressing room filled to the brim with low and confidence Deadwood. How was he supposed to get top four with Roberto Soldado up front? I mean, come on. His setup at Marseille is slightly better. It's a more balanced squad. He has an utter star like Florian Tovan. Yeah, they keep flopping in Europe, but lads, they've only lost one league game this season. They won one in the PSG. And if they win both games in hand, they go join top of the league. West Brom, Steve Clark, Scotland. Yeah, remember when Steve Clark was sacked at West Brom in December 2013, despite guiding them to 8th in the Premier League the previous season? Well, he's got a better job now. Not only does he have a marginally better group of players than his Scotland team, but he's just qualified them for the first tournament in 22 years. He's taking on England at Wembley next summer. For a former St. Mirren defender, this guy is living his dream. Instead of, you know, having to put up with Sido Berhino's menstrual cycle. West Ham, Manuel Pellegrini, Real Batiste. Yeah, Manuel Pellegrini was sacked by West Ham last Christmas, and you probably assume he was going to retire, right? No, he's currently 12th in the league at Real Batiste. This guy left behind a footballing headache in London, coaching certain players who clearly didn't want to be anywhere near the club. So instead, coaching the likes of Nabil Fakir, Christian Teo, and the ultimate professional Joaquin, it must be a breath of fresh air. Wolves, Mick McCarthy, Apple Nicosia. You know what, I'm going to go with Mick McCarthy. His last gig in the Premier League was in charge of a sinking ship in Wolves. It can't have been much fun. He's currently manager of Apoel Nicosia, and he has himself the back arse of Cyprus. But lads, this is a team who finished third in the league last season. He and Terry Connor could realistically win their first major trophy in 30 years of management. Oh yeah, and have their first ever crack at Champions League football. Not to mention, Nicosia is a beautiful city. Wolverhampton, by contrast, looks like the inside of James Corden's shoe. Anyway, that's the end of it, lads. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and as always, I'll talk to you in a while.